South Africa's national minimum wage of 20 rand per hour became effective on January the 1st this year. President Cyril Ramaphosa said this was historic and was going a long way to help people move out of poverty. Kasatu President Zingiswalosi said that the nation would benefit from the minimum wage directly as 47% of the workforce currently earns below the threshold. And she also said that it would act as a stimulus for the economy. Uh, what we do know is that not everyone was happy uh, with the minimum wage and at least one economist is not convinced that it will work to help deal with poverty and inequality. And to tell us why, I'm now joined by UCT economics professor via Skype, Haroon Borat. Uh, Prof, thanks very much indeed for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. Thanks very much, Peter. So, Prof, a lot of people are going to be saying, hang on, what is this man talking about? If 47% of people were below that threshold and now have been raised above the threshold, isn't that a move towards alleviating poverty and uh, dealing with inequality? Yes, I mean, in general, what happens, Peter, is that economists tend to think, in particular, when one looks at the minimum wage, we, we're concerned about the trade-off. So we're concerned about the fact that probably the harshest trade-off in economics is the one between wages and employment. Uh, and so in many cases, what happens is higher wages will tend to have the impact of, based on some of the evidence we have, a reduction in employment. So we start from that sort of um, observation and of course one can empirically test that. Um, the counter to that of course is that as you push people's wages up the impact should be a reduction in poverty levels and so what is what, what is framed as a trade-off between a uh, reduction in employment on the one hand and a reduction in poverty on the other hand are the two sort of contested areas for investigation in terms of a national minimum wage. And so where we often end up is uh, empirically is we actually go and test this for the South African context. Um, and so the early evidence suggests that if you push minimum wages uh, too high or to a level that employers in particular cannot cope with, uh, as, as we saw in particular in the case of agriculture, you will see um, significant job losses. And, and in many ways, this is not just myself, but economists in, 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 in many, many areas working in many different domains are concerned about the, if you like, the job loss effect potentially of a minimum wage. Not everywhere and always, but potentially that's one of the consequences one is always uh, keeping an eye on within the context of a minimum wage and in particular in our case, the new national minimum wage. So the president was uh, very um, emphatic in calling it a living wage and uh, uh, trying to get to a living wage rather from this minimum wage. And so th the question then is if we take away at least a minimum as we try to get towards a living wage, um, doesn't this leave the system open to abuse uh, for people working for next to nothing? Yes, so maybe just to come back at it again, I mean, one of the concerns you often have is when you look at, um, uh, so we run these com computable general equilibrium models which run um, the impact of a minimum wage on the economy as a whole. What you find, unfortunately, is because you the model predicts certain, a certain level of job losses, that works against the poverty reduction effect. So what you end up having our model results show is very little or modest impacts under certain conditions on um, poverty, and in some cases, no change in poverty, and often no change in inequality. And, and in many ways, Peter, your problem is that we've placed too much of a burden, I would argue, on the national minimum wage to do the job of poverty and inequality reduction. Now, let me be clear, that's not to say we shouldn't have a national minimum wage. I think it's a really important uh, uh, sort of core right of workers the question is, how do you build around a modest minimum wage other elements of a policy package that can both protect jobs, but at the same time also reduce poverty and inequality? And I think for me, that's, that's the search, really, um, in, terms of, um, in terms of how you manage uh, the minimum wage as a policy. Oh, as you correctly say, if you set it too high, 
you will see, and evidence shows this globally, you will see higher levels of violation of the minimum wage. All right, so perhaps you're starting to give me a clue for my next question um, would be, if we say then that um, the minimum wage might not be the right tool to use, what should we be doing? Uh, what, what is the solution to try and manage uh, poverty and inequality uh, for our workers? Yes, so just to come back, I mean, uh, the, uh, let me be clear, I'm not an anti-minimum wage yeah. lobbyist and so on. I think it's a really important core right for workers. The real question is not whether you have a minimum wage or not. The real question is what level to set it at. And you set it at a level so that, again, you try and mitigate uh, significant job losses like we had in agriculture, but at the same time protect workers. Now, one route into that is to think about a policy package. And I'll give you one example is if one, uh, say in the case of agriculture, had a slightly and empirically one can test that lower minimum wage, you then come in with complementary policy instruments such as food vouchers, free transport, free medical aid, and so on from other government departments to support farm workers. And so what you end up doing is you improve vulnerability amongst farm workers through other policy instruments and take less or take the pressure off the minimum wage uh, in terms of trying to do the job of the, the sort of one instrument that rules them all, the one instrument that's going to reduce poverty and inequality everywhere and always. All right, we've run out of time, but very quickly, have you in your modeling at this stage come up with a number of what that equilibrium figure might be for minimum wage? Uh, no, I'm not going to fall into that trap of giving an alternative <laughs> minimum wage. Just to say, uh, I think, you know, that, that train has left, so to speak. So we've set a minimum wage, 3,500 rand a month, 20 rand per hour. I think uh, for analysts now, what's interesting is to see what kind of uh, employment or disemployment effects there may be. One is hopeful they'll be minimal, but I think the, you are likely to see in certain labor-intensive sectors um, certain sort of uh, uh, high vulnerability sectors, um, you're going to see either job losses or reduction in hours or, in fact, a combination of that together with uh, increased levels of violation. All right, Prof. I wish we could chat uh, so much longer on these issues, but we're going to have to leave it there for the time being. Professor Harun uh, Borat, who's a professor of economics at the University of Cape Town, uh, sharing his thoughts on this uh, tricky minimum wage, which uh, was introduced, of course, on the 1st of January this year and uh, likely to be an issue uh, in the elections as well. OK, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back at the top of the hour as we start to, to tell your story right here on SA Today.